Welcome to Electron Line, and in this video we're going to show you how to find the moment of inertia of a box, basically a box on a string that's going to be rotating around the y-axis. And the axis rotation is equal to x, the length of the box is the difference between b and a, it's a distance of x away from the axis of rotation, and notice the shape of the box is that the height is equal to the width, s by s. The mass of the box, m, the density of the box, rho. We can also do this problem using the parallel axis theorem, and we're going to show you how to do that that way as well, and then compare the answers, and hopefully they'll be the same. But let's first do it just simply through integration. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small little slice of this box, like this, and imagine the slice will continue through like this, and like this. So what is the volume of this little slice? Well, the volume would be dv, and dv would be equal to the height times the width times the thickness. So it would be s times s times dx because the thickness of that slice will be a small little infinitesimally thin dx. And so that will give us the volume. And the mass of that little slice, that would be dm, that would be equal to the density times the volume. In this case, that would be the density times s squared times dx. That would be the mass of that little slice. And if we imagine that little slice being rotated around, all the way around like that, we can then say, and of course, then in this case, x would be all the way out to that little slice. So we'll make it like that. So we can then say that the small amount of moment of inertia, we'll call it a di, is equal to the mass of the little slice, which is dm, times x squared, x being the distance away from the axis of rotation. So if we then plug in what dm is equal to, we can see that di, is equal to the density times s squared times dx times x squared, like that. And then if we're going to find the moment of inertia of this whole box right here, we're simply going to integrate all the little slices. That means i will be equal to the integral of all the di's. And of course, it will be from x equals a to x equals b. That will be the limit of integration, which is equal to, and let's take out what's a constant, the density, and s squared is a constant, and then we integrate x squared dx from x equals a to x equals b. And that's a relatively easy integral to do, so let's go ahead and integrate that. So we can say that i is equal to the density times s squared times x cubed divided by 3 from a to b. So we plug in the upper limit, and we'll plug in the lower limit, subtract the two. So this would be equal to the density times s squared times, oh, we can take the 3 outside the, the bracket there, we plug it over here, and so this will then give us b cubed minus a cubed, like that. Okay, two more things we should do. We can factor this out, and, so, and then also we can plug in what rho is equal to, because remember that the density would be equal to the mass divided by the volume. So in this case, the density would be equal to the mass divided by the volume of this box, which is s squared times the length, which would be b minus a. So that's the density. So we plug that in for density, and then we'll factor this out and see what we get. So we have i is equal to the density, which is the mass, divided by s squared times b minus a. In the numerator, we're going to have an s squared, and in the denominator, we're going to have a 3. So we can't forget about the 3 down there. And then, we, when we factor that, we get b minus a times b squared plus ab plus a squared. And then notice, we can factor some things out. The b minus a cancels out. The s squared cancels out. And we'll have one-third, let me write over here. So have the moment of inertia will be equal to one-third times the mass. So have one-third times the mass times this quantity that we have left over. So it would be times the quantity b squared plus ab plus a squared. And that would be the moment of inertia of this box rotating a distance x away from the axis of rotation. Now, we could have also found this using the parallel ax theorem. And so here you can say that we first find the, center, the moment of inertia if the box has its center mass right at the axis of rotation. So what we're going to do is, what if the box was right over here? rotating about its center of mass. 
What is the moment of inertia in that case? Well, we can say that I, therefore, is equal to 1 twelfth ml squared, that would be the length of the box, plus the moment of inertia added when we move the box away like this, a distance, and so that would be a distance d right here. So we move it a distance d, so it would therefore be md squared m d squared. Now if we calculate that, we should get the exact same values we do here. So let's find out. First of all, the length of the box would be b minus a. So instead of writing l squared, we could write b minus a squared. So this becomes i. Let me kind of go like this. So we have i is equal to 1 twelfth m times b minus a quantity squared. That's the length of the box squared plus m times d. Now we have to find out how far did we move the box? Well, we moved it from here to here, which is halfway between x equals b and x equals a. So the halfway point would be b plus a divided by 2. So d is actually b plus a divided by 2. That gives us this point right here. That's this exact distance. So we have m times, that would be b plus a divided by 2 quantity squared. Now, if we simplify that, it should add up being equal to this. So let's find out if that's indeed the case. So we have i is equal to m times b squared minus 2ab plus a squared plus m times, well, 1 half squared would be 1 fourth times, and the numerator squared would be b squared plus 2ab plus a squared. All right. So, what we need to do now is find the common denominator. Let's do that. So the common denominator would be 12. So we have i is equal to 1 twelfth m times b squared minus 2ab plus a squared plus 3 times that. So 3 times m, or let me write it like this. So 1 twelfth m times 3. Because I multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3, I get 3 over 12. So I'll write it like this. And there's a reason why I wrote it like that. It'll become evident in just a moment. Times b squared plus 2ab plus a squared. Now, we have 1 twelfth m, 1 twelfth m times this and times that. So now we see we have a b squared plus 3b squared. So this becomes i equals 1 twelfth m times... 1b squared plus 3b squared is 4b squared minus 2ab plus 3 times 2ab, that 3 times 2 is 6, so 6ab minus 2ab is plus 4ab. And then finally, a squared plus 3a squared is plus 4a squared. Like that. So now we can factor out a 4. So this would be equal to 4 over 12m times b squared plus ab plus a squared. And then finally, when we reduce 4 twelfths, we can say that i is therefore equal to 1 third times the mass times the quantity b squared plus ab plus a squared. And if we did it right, this should exactly equal that. And it does. So now you can see that there's two ways of solving a problem like this. When you have an object that's rotating away from the center, from the axis of rotation, you can use the parallel axis theorem by taking the moment of inertia at the center mass of the object's center mass is placed at the axis of rotation. We know that that's equal to 1 12th ml squared. And then if we move it a distance d, we add an md squared term to that. And that moment of inertia should equal the same thing if we simply take a little slice, integrate across the box, add it all up, and the two results should come out to exactly the same thing. So now you can see how the parallel axis theorem is a really nice way to solve these types of problems, but you can do it using integration as well. And that's how it's done.